Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who left such nice comments on the last video where I was kind of uh, sharing some um, something that was uh, difficult for me and I got a lot of love and support from my followers. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. It gave me the inspiration and encouragement to keep going. So let's get started on this next one. This is... Um, the Julie Nutting Paper Doll Altered Book Series 2. This is book number two, and we're winding down close to the end, so there's only a couple more layouts, and then this project will be done. I did get a question about the books becoming so thick and gaitered, so here's what it looks like if I stand it up on the table because of the thick pages. And I like to just stand it up on a tabletop when I'm finished with them and they just look really pretty and fancy and then you can pick it up and look through it so instead of it being a book that's on a shelf I do stand them up and display them the reason it's getting thick is um, you know you have things like popsicle sticks and the dolls pages like this where they're doubled and tripled that have fold outs things like that this one with a fold down it does make your book tend to be a little bit thick. So that's okay. I don't mind. Um, this one that I just did definitely is thick because I have that thick book with uh, the information about Frida, these thick things. They're going to smash because they're coffee filters. They're going to they're gonna flatten out a little bit. But one thing you can do if you don't like to have your book be gaitered and standing up on a table like this, you can always take your crocodile tool and put it on the smallest hole and you can punch right through this book board it's it's thick but it does punch just perfectly well with a crocodile so you can punch a hole on this side and this side after you decorate your cover you can slip through some sari silk some lace some shredded material um, some twine whatever you like and then you can make some ties that you can kind of you know squeeze your book together a little bit and tie it so you can always put a tie on your book and it's not too terribly gaitered or thick but that to me is the beauty of these altered books is to have the yummy goodness of all the interesting things on the pages like this is a fold-out book I mean those things are thick but boy they make it a fun interactive book so let's move on and get started on this next layout I still have a couple of fun uh, ideas up my sleeve for this book that I haven't shown yet. The next one is going to be so fun, so cute. Um, so let me get started and move forward to do the next layout. And I'm definitely going to remove some more pages. There's still too many pages in here. So I'm going to remove some pages and then um, decide where I want to do my layout. So for removing pages, again, I'm going to find my section with the strings in my string bound book and grab the page on the left, the page on the right and pull and that removes them from the string and it easily removes a couple of pages. So that's the best way to do it so that you don't have any uh, jagged pages. So since this is the back side of this one, I can't remove any more here. So I'm going to move forward and find some more strings some more places where the next set of strings are to remove some more pages. So here's the next spot with strings. I was able to move forward about oh, four or five pages and find that spot. And then I'm going to remove several in this area. So that's what you want to do is just keep finding those strings, remove some pages. If you get a little piece of paper that comes full, comes out and gets stuck in the strings, you can easily pluck those out move forward again, find the strings, and remove more. So now I've moved just about enough pages to complete my book with a few more layouts and it made my book thinner. It gave enough pages for still making the pockets and things and putting sets together. So I've got just enough left and I was able to remove this many pages and then I put these aside I use them for um, making cards and making other things you know that slip into the thing the pockets like tags and for um, 
doing backgrounds and things. So always save these. They also make good palettes for your paint when you're using acrylic paints and things. So I'm going to put those aside and now I'm ready to do my next set. So I am going to stick with just moving forward like I have been and doing the next layout starting where I finished the last one. So this side is complete because it's the card that were two put together and then two more put together to make the hidden pocket there. So this is a nice thick four page side to be the left side of my layout. So on the right side, what I'm gonna do is put two pages together and two more pages together like this, two sets. So that's what I'm gonna do for the next layout. So I'm gonna glue those two sets together and let them completely dry and then show you my idea for the layout. And in trying to think this through and what I want to do with the page, I'm actually gonna do a third set. So there's going to be two more pages together like that. So there'll be three sets of two. The reason I can do um, get away with two instead of three is in this old book the pages are really nice and heavy. So two pages is enough to make a set. If you have an old book where the pages are thin, you might want to do three pages to complete your sets. Here's a little tip of something that I like to use. This is a Fry's grocery food bag and I cut up the sides and cut the handles off and then I cut it into pieces. This works so good for when you're gluing your pages together with your Mod Podge. So you've got your two sets and you slip this in like this and put it down. It, it protects the other pages and you can do your gluing in between like this and you're squishing out and it's because it's so slick it doesn't stick to this or if it dries to it it peels right away and I reuse them over and over again so one bag makes six of them and they I just fold them up and keep them in my little uh, cubby hole and I use them over and over again when I'm gluing my pages together it works even better than wax paper because it's more plastic and it's more slick and it's a great way to upcycle a grocery bag. Last bag in the landfill. So here are my sets put together and I've got three of them. So this is going to be where my layout is going to be. So this page, this first page is going to go over this page. So what I want to do on this page, on this layout, I'm going to use a window. This is a die cut window that came in a package, um, but you could, and you could use any window, including um, if you have metal dies for like your Sizzix of a window, you could cut out a window, you could draw your own window. That, so, but this one was the perfect size and I like the configuration, so I'm going to use this one. So on this first page, you can't count this page, you kind of have to ignore it. I want the window to go about right here. This is where the window is going to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is to trace it with pencil. Get it straight. As straight as I can get it. And I'm kind of using the book text on the page to help me get it straight. And I'm going to just trace the outside. That way I know where it's going to go, oops, where it's going to go and how big it is. Okay, so I've got it on the page like that, drawn on. So now when I cut it out, I'm going to put a um, mat behind here, a self-healing mat, and I'm going to cut this window out. But I'm going to cut it out um, just slightly less than what it is because if you cut it out the exact size when you try to glue this back onto it you're not going to have anything to glue onto so you need a little edge a little edge to be able to glue your window frame into place so I'm going to just kind of sketch around I'm giving it oh gosh between an eighth and a quarter of an inch and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not even going to see it really. Okay, and then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut this out. So I'm going to just cut out the shape of the window.
like that. I'm going to put this over it, make sure, see, it fits nicely on it, and it gives you a place to glue, so now the window fits in place. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is to put uh, plastic behind the window, and I think I'm going to put the plastic... Yeah, I think I'm going to glue the plastic to the back side of this, not to the back side of this. It doesn't matter. You could do it either way. But I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to glue a piece of recycled plastic to this back here for the window. So here's a piece of plastic upcycled from um, a package of veggies from the grocery store. So I wanted to come all the way to the top here and give some space on the sides and at the bottom but I'm going to glue it further out so um, along the outside edges I'm going to put my glue and put it in place. I think I'm going to clamp it. and let it dry. Now I'm going to set that aside as it's drying and I'm going to take my window. I'm using a piece of really thick heavy cardstock and I want to lay this window out and trace it. I'm going to maybe kind of give a little indication of the windows too but this is just for my own reference just like this what I'm gonna do with this I'm gonna do this later on in the video so I'll show you this part later but that's really important to trace your windows so you know size and then um, have some thick cardboard or cardstock to make this piece this piece is gonna be it could also be made out of pages that you've put together from your book pages it would probably have to be three pages to make it nice and sturdy um, and you'll get the gist of what I'm doing, what I'm going to do with this. It's going to be the really best part of um, this page layout. So it's a really fun, exciting part for the end. And I'm going to put this aside. And now I'm going to work on my girls. Okay, for this next one, I'm going to use the Kate stamp. And in the picture, it does show that they used book text for her actual body. Um, I'm using book text, but I'm going to do it in a different way. So I just want to show a fun technique and using book text to decorate her. I've got three Distress inks. These are Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks. And I'm using Twisted Citron, Wilted Violet, and Peacock Feathers. And my book text page, an old scrap piece of junk plastic, my spray bottle. So what you want to do is to, this is the smush technique, so smush some ink on there onto your plastic, mist it with your water bottle, and then you're going to just do some smushing on your page all over your book text page like this. It makes a really cool distressed looking pattern and then you want to use your um, dryer to dry that before you move on to the second color otherwise they're going to blend together and you don't really want that you want your colors to be separate so I like to take a little cloth and wipe off my plastic so they don't blend and then take my heat tool and dry my paper in between colors So this is a great time to use those pieces of book text that you removed pages from your book. It's a great way to use them. So now I'm going to add that peacock blue color, same thing, ink, spritz, flip and smoosh. It's so pretty. It just comes out to be a nice... pattern on that paper and I love that you can still see the book text. So cool. 
And if there's a little blob of it, like here, you can take your finger and blend that out. It almost looks like watercolor painting, like that. And then it looks kind of watercolorish. So layer on top of top of layer, because I dried it between layers, you get a second color of purple. So you're ending up now with three different colors because these are water reactive when they get wet they react again, but then look what it did. It made some really pretty colors in there. So using two inks, I've created three different colors. Now I'm gonna dry it, and I'm gonna add the green. So here's the third color, and that's the green citron. I like that citron, twisted citron. I'm gonna add some twisted citron green. Those three colors look really pretty together. This is going to be so pretty. And I'm going to end up with a whole lot more than I need, but that's okay because you can use it on other things, in art journals, on a tag. So I'm putting it all over the whole page, but obviously when you stamp your girl, you're only going to use a small little part. And then the rest will just be a bonus. I think I need a little bit more. Some down here. Oh yeah. And you, it, these are good to use colors that complement each other so that they don't create a muddy, ugly color. These colors all complement each other, and when they blend together, they do make prettier, pretty colors. So that's what you end up with. That is really cool. Look at. It almost looks like a watercolor painting. And I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna take my girl and stamp over it and use that for her dress. So now I've inked my stamp with black archival ink. This is my Ranger, and I've also inked her shoes. So her dress and her shoes. And I'm gonna just find a really cute, colorful spot to put this down and stamp right on my page. And now I'm just going to trim those out. So look how pretty that turned out. So here's her dress and you can still read the book text but you've got all those luscious beautiful colors. I love it. And if you want to do something over this like maybe um, brush on some glitter watercolors or anything like that, you're going to want to spray this with a matte fixative so that it doesn't react again. But you could use colored pencils over it and that wouldn't um, that wouldn't move the ink. So let's try that. Let me show you. And then this beautiful paper, look at this that's left, that you can tear up and use for collage and background pieces as long as you spray it. I think I'm going to re-stamp her shoes. They didn't come out the way I wanted. So if I took a color, like, say I take a little colored pencil, I can come in here and do some shading or add some pops of color with a colored pencil and it's not going to, it's not going to affect that ink. I love using colored pencils on book text. I love it. So that's pretty. I'm just adding a little pop of, of a blue. And that just makes it stand out even more. So fun to play around. I like it. So here's what that dress looks like. I love it. It's so colorful and pretty. It's so cute. And um, I still need to put her shoes on. But what I'm going to do next, I want to add a couple layers of varnish. Varnish is really going to bring that out. And so I use matte finish. This is a matte fixative spray by Krylon, and it just mists on. I'm going to go take this outside. And before I trim her out, I'm going to mist over this. So then the Distress Oxide inks won't move. They won't reactivate and become, you know, watercolory. I like the speckly look of them. Look at how it looks. 
And so I'm going to spray it. That'll seal it. And then I'm going to just take a little paintbrush and some varnish, and I'm going to put a couple of coats of varnish over her dress. That's going to add some shine to it, and it's going to um, pop those colors out even more. So I just want to do that for my own mixed media fun. So so here's what it looks like. See, the varnish is still wet, but look at how the varnish just made those colors pop. So cool. I love it. It looks really, really cool. I know. Super cute, right? Okay, so she's double varnished. I love how that looks. It looks really, really pretty. And now I took my paper piercer and I poked holes here, 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 and here. I put some bead thread on a bead needle. Bead needles are very thin. And then I'm using size 15.0 little micro beads. I love 15.0 micro beads. And so I'm going to go through the back here and come up the front. Same thing I did when I um, did those little pockets. Just leave that loosely and I can put a dot of glue and some tape on it. I'm going to put my beads on and then go back down the hole and make a beaded necklace for my girl. So here's what that looks like with the beaded earrings and necklace. And then I just put a little dot of glue to glue them tacked in down into place. So here she is with her little dimensional hairstyle, her beaded necklace, and then her little mixed media dress and shoes. So here's the next one I'm going to use. This is Camille. I think I've used her before and I've got a fun idea for her skirt. To start with, I stamped her on really, really heavy cardstock. So this is nice and solid and thick cardstock. This is the color I want her skirt, so that's gonna be that. This is gonna be the border of her skirt, so I'm gonna layer that. I'm gonna use this cute paper for the top part of her dress and the and the waistband and bow. I'm gonna layer her, and then I'm gonna move on to the the fun part. So here's what she looks like put together and she's on the really heavy heavy cardstock and the reason I did that is I am going to embroider a flower garden in the bottom of her dress. So the little um, border on her dress I did it green to signify grass. I did this in blue for sky. I did the cute little floral pattern for the bow and the top part of her dress to kind of go along with it. And so now what I'm going to do is take my paper piercer and I'm going to use a pencil and kind of sketch sketch some lines out for grass and stems and leaves and little flowers. And then I'm going to come back in with all different colors of embroidery floss and embroider it. So I just sketched out the lines for stems and kind of an idea of what I want to do with the flowers. And now I'm going to do the embroidery. So here's what my girl looks like. I did some simple embroidered flowers and grass and stems and leaves. And I did little French knots to make these look kind of like hollyhocks. And then I've got some daisies with little French knots in the middle and just some simple flowers. But look at how striking and fun that is. Just a different idea. Not that everybody will want to do this, but it was easy. It was fun. And it just is something really fun to look at. It's going to be really cute in my book for something different. So there's another fun idea of something to do to decorate your Julie Nutting dolls. I'm going to use Mod Podge on this part, but up here by the window I'm going to use my art glitter glue and I'm going to make how I want this window to be, this pocket to be, and I want it to be just about a quarter of an inch out from the window and at about a half inch at the bottom like that. And now I'm going to put Mod Podge on the rest of the page and then stick these two pages together. I think Mod Podge works best for the paper part of it. And it probably should have plastic. Okay. That way you can brush out to the edge without worrying. The 
get a nice good coverage out to the edge. And don't forget this spot back here. Be sure you get some back there. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to press this into place. Working from the seam of the book outwards. I'm trying to get it as smooth as I can. Sometimes the edges, when they come up, I just put some art glitter glue along those little edges just to help stick them a little bit better. Art glitter glue is just the best. Love that stuff. I've tried every glue there is, and that one is the best. Okay. Give a little glue in there to double stick that really well. Okay, now that's ready to dry. So I'm going to just let that completely dry before I move on. And I think I'll lay it flat with something heavy on top just to weight it down. I use this heavy antique cast iron iron as my weight. <laughs> that's my favorite thing to use. Okay, so this is ready to go. It's all nice and smooth down. And we have a pocket back here with that plastic. Now I'm ready to do my background. So I'm going to paint this um, like I did in the last video where I put uh, gesso down first, then paint, and then draw my little floor because this is going to be a room like this is a room with furniture and whatnot. So I'm going to paint my walls and paint my floors, but I'm going to gesso it first. So it'll be um, one or two layers of gesso, one or two layers of paint, and then I'm going to decorate it with um, furniture that I find in magazines. This is going to be similar to the first video I did in the very first series when I did Girls on the Edge, and I showed how to lay out magazine furniture to create a room. That's what I'm going to do with this one, so that's going to be the same. So instead of repeating it and showing it here, I'll uh, link that video, and you can reference that video if you haven't seen it yet. And once I get this all ready to go, um, then I'll show it to you. But you do want to paint this... Be really careful not to get paint on your plastic window, but you want to paint it before you actually glue your little window to the front because once you put this on, it's going to be hard to paint up to it without getting paint on this. So paint your, paint your page first, and then you're going to glue your window into place. So I've chosen some magazine images to use on my pages. And this one actually was out of a book. I love that bench seat with the pillows. I'm going to use um, things like this. Look for things like this. Here is, this is from Victoria Magazine. It's a cute kitchen and a dining room. And then they show all these framed photos. But look at those cute little photos in frames where you could cut those out and hang those on the wall to put in the background. So look for things like that. Here's an article about an art gallery, and here's some framed artwork. That would be cute. I love this modern couch. I think that's going to be cute on this side. And then I'm going to do something really fun with this hanging lamp that's going to hang from the top of the page. So look for some magazine. If you're going to do this like I'm doing it, look for some magazine images with different furniture and photos and maybe some tables with lamps and plants and things and create your cute uh, background. So originally this was going to be a girl on the edge with another girl on this next set. That's why I made three sets. One to cover this and create this pocket. One for this, which was going to be a girl on the edge. And then this page where I was going to put another girl on the edge so you'd see two. And I've changed my mind. I love this wooden bench with the pillows and she just looks cute as she is right in front of it. So I'm just going to put her on the page, this one too. They're just going to be added to the pages without being girls on the edge. I couldn't do a girl on the edge on this side because 
Frida's on the other side. She was just going to go here, but I think it'll look good just as it is. And then I'll show you my idea with this lamp. This is going to be a lamp on this side. And then my idea for the window. So let me put the girls in place and then I'll show you my next idea. So I found some pictures on the internet of some hanging plants. I thought some hanging potted plants would look really cute in the room. I had a picture of this lamp. I love this lamp. So what I did was duplicate it in that print a size. You can do duplicate. So now I have two the same size and I'm going to make something really fun out of that. So now I'm just going to fussy cut these out and add them to my room layout. This, the house plants are turning out so cute. Look, love it. And where there's white spots, like in this one, I couldn't trim around all that. So what I'm just doing is taking an alcohol marker in a light yellow that's kind of similar to the background. And I'm just going in there and just dropping in a little bit of yellow to hide those white spots. Make the plant blend in a little bit better. Like that. I did it here. You can see it, but it does hide the white parts. And then I think I'm going to take paint pens... And I think I'm going to draw some little extra leaves and vines and things in paint pen. Maybe a couple extra little fern fronds over here just to um, add some extra to it so it doesn't look like something that's just been glued onto the page. So with this lamp, what I want to do in some of my previous videos, um, probably... Not so sure if there are any, well, there's probably a few in the Julie Nutting videos, but when I've done my Justine paper doll videos, a lot of those kits have spinners in them. Um, so you'll, if you've seen those, you'll know what I mean about a spinner, and you'll see when I put this on the page. But what my idea is for this, I'm going to cut one of them out, then I'm going to um, flip this upside down, hold it up to the light or a light box, and I'm going to glue these two images back to back with a piece of embroidery floss in the middle of them. So that's what I'm doing with these duplicate Im images. So here's what I did with my lamp. So it is a spinner. It's not really a spin, it's a flip. Here it is with the lamp turned on, and when you flip it over, the lamp is turned out. So that's what I did with that. And now to move on to the window. So where I took my heavy card, I had showed you that I took my window before I glued it down, and I traced so that I knew what size I needed. I created a card and a tab at the top, and this is going to slip in here. So see how that slips behind the window. And it comes right to the top of the page with that tab at the top. So next I'm going to decorate this card on both sides and show you the completed idea for the layout. Here's my tag to go in the window. So there's a sunshine. It says rise and shine on the top of the tag. And it's got clouds and then a little bit of flowers on the other side. It's got good night and a moon and some sparkly stars. So we slip this into the pocket like this. And slide it all the way in. And you've got rise and shine up here. A sun in the window. The flowers growing. And you've got your light turned to the light off. So there's the morning, and then you can pull your tag out and flip it over and slip it in the pocket. And you've got good night and the moon and stars in the window. And then you can flip the lamp to where the light is turned on because you'd turn on the light at night. So there it is. There's my page. I hope you enjoyed this. This window pocket was super fun to make. I love the tag with day and night time, the magazine image background, the little hanging plants, the embroidery, and, um, and this mixed media dress and beaded jewelry with a little I added a little bit of lace. I also copied this pillow and brought it over here and made it smaller on that print to size app so that the pillows on the two couches match each other. 
So there we go. There's my page, and I hope you enjoy this. This was the next fun layout in our Julie Nutting Paper Doll Altered Book. I hope that you learned some new techniques, try something fun like embroidery, maybe the mixed media with um, distress oxides, make a window where you can do the night and day flip, and have fun with your book. So thanks for stopping by. Go make some art, because art soothes the heart. Mm -hmm.